In today's video, I'm going to continue the Unity addressable tutorials. We're going to be implementing a loader to basically keep track of the information that is coming from a remote server. Once that information is processed and imported into Unity, we're going to basically be dismissing the loader so that we can let our players know that everything completed successfully. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so what we're going to be doing today is to show you how we can implement a loading mechanism so that when we load the assets, we have some kind of a progress indicator that tells our users that everything is getting loaded. So I went ahead and added a couple of things and this includes a button in here. So if I were to hit play, I'm going to show you how that looks. The reload level is going to allow you to basically reload everything. We're still going to see everything in the log, but if I click in here, the, the level is going to get reloaded. And then we have this banner here that you know says loading and I'm going to be animating that and creating a loader that it's going to, you know, it's going to show while we're loading all the assets and then it's going to hide as soon as we are completed loading the assets remotely. So the first thing that I'm going to do is let's go ahead and go into Visual Studio. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the Addressable Manager. And a lot of the things in here are not going to change. The, the one thing that I want to change before we, we start going with the loader is I want to change this implementation. Remember that I show you that the other, the only thing in here that is calling the instantiate is the player armature. Well, what I want to do is I want to change this because we do want to load the assets and I also want to instantiate it after. So, because right now it's just saying, okay, I think by, by doing this, it's implicitly loading the asset automatically for us. So I want to be more explicit when I do this. I'm going to say load asset async, just like I did on the one below. And I'm going to say, I'm going to load a game object. And then I'm just going to go ahead and bind to the uncompleted method, just like I did on the, on the other ones. And then this one, I'm going to call the, I'm just call this one, the player armature. And this is the actual asset, right? This is now the instance. And then what I'll do here, I'll just go ahead and add another line. In this line, we are going to be instantiating a new object. So I'm going to go ahead and do the player amateur reference. And then I'm also going to be binding to this, but in this case, it's going to be the actual game object. So I'm going to say this is a player armature, armature game object. And then I'll go ahead and do my Lambda here, just like I did with the other objects. And then that way we have full control, right? We're going to be loading an asset in here. Once that asset is loaded, and then we can instantiate the object. So I'm going to go ahead and move everything in here inside of the callback. And then instead of using geo here, the object that I want to, that I want to reference is going to be the actual game object that we are instantiating. And then everything in here is going to stay the same, except that I'm going to be adding, let me go ahead and copy this. I'm going to be adding another message here and I'm going to say loading the player armature, which is going to be different to actually instantiating it. And then in here, I'll just say instantiated player controller. Then we can add another line here, perhaps here. And then we can say instantiating. That way we have more, you know, more control, you know, for everything. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is in here, we want to check if for completion, right? So we're going to say, checking for completion, which means that everything, everything loaded. So I can say loading content completion. So in here, we're going to do something like the player armature as a reference asset is not null. So if that is not null, that means that we were able to load the player armature. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the music. I want to make sure that that it's also, you know, loaded. And then lastly, we also have Another component in here, which I believe, let me go ahead and make sure that I go back to that, which is going to be the logo. So we only have three assets, but you get the idea of what needs to happen if you have you know, a lot more assets. Obviously, you probably want to create something more robust than this, but this shows you an example of what I'm thinking about. And then in here, we'll have another line where we'll check to see if things are getting loaded, but we'll, we'll come back to this because we need to implement this, implement loading loader. So we'll just come back to this and, and that's basically what's going to, it's going to keep track. And then in the start method, we're going to say, we're going to start the loader. We need to implement this as well. Implement it. And then in here, we're going to say implement the loader as well. Okay. So now we need to go back into the loader. So the loading that I have in here is just a GUI and that GUI has uh, a rec transform and inside has a raw image. So if we go back into the loading area, you're going to see it has a raw image, which is basically the background. 
And then inside of it, we have a text mesh pro GUI that basically, you know, controls the text. So what we're going to do is I'm going to be using something called do twin and do twin is going to allow us to do basically do an animation. So I'm going to be changing the alpha from one color to the other. That way we can do, we can probably do like a zero alpha up to, you know, a higher number. That way we can kind of see the alpha value changing and people know that we are, you know, we're currently loading. So let me go ahead and go and open the addressable demos. And we're going to be looking at this class in here, which is going to be attached to the, the loader area. Okay, so that's everything that we needed to do for the loader. So let me just give you a walkthrough of how this works. So this is going to specify what type of animation we're going to be doing. I just selected the aqua, but there's multiple that you can also select. I'm also making it serializable as well as the alpha twin from so that we can change the alpha value from you know the minimum number to a maximum number. I'm also going to get a reference to the raw image, which is basically the one that contains the background of the loader, and now also a reference of the actual text so that we can basically tween the value, the alpha value on those two. And then I also have a public property that we can set just to determine if you know we're currently loading the content. I also have a reference to the tweener, so in case that we want to stop them. So if we are done loading, we want to make sure that we stop them. And if we're going to start loading again, we want to make sure that we resume them. So on the awake method, I get a reference to the raw image and also the text mesh pro your GUI. I also have two different methods. One of them is the start loader and the other one is the stop loader. So on the start loader, I'm just logging that information. I'm making sure that if this is the first time through, I'm going to be basically setting the animations for the for the actual background and the text. And then I'm adding those to a list of those types. And I'm going to I'm not going to say these types because they are pretty long, but it's basically so that we can animate the, you know, the color, the from color, the to color, and also the color options. And then if it's not the first time, we know that we have the tweeners already in a list. And then that way I can just basically restart it. And then if we call this method the first time through or the second time through that we want to restart it, we're going to say it's loading equal true. And then we're also going to make basically this game object visible. On the stop side, we're going to be logging that as well. And then we're also going to be pausing the tweeners. And then I'm also going to make sure that the, you know, that is loading is set to false. And we're also hiding, you know, the, the game object. So that's how this works. The other thing that I need to do is we need to go back into the addressable manager and there's a couple of things I need to do in here. I need to do another check. And if you go back here, actually, let me go back to the loader. You're going to see that I make this one is a single tone. And that way we can go, you know, we can be anywhere here. We can actually do another end. And I'm going to say the loader, that instance is loading. So if we're currently loading and these ones are not known, that means that I'm done loading, right? So what I need to do is I'm just going to say loader instance uh, stop loader. The next thing that we're going to need to do is we need to go into the star method and I'm going to say the same thing that I did instance, but this time it's going to be starting the loader. That way, when we start the scene for the first time, it's going to go through, you know, going to go and start the loader. And then once we load the content, we're going to be stopping the loader. This is also going to execute when we reload the scene, which is the other implementation that I have in Unity. So if I go back in here, you're going to see that I have that button. When I click it, it's going to go through that loop one more time. So the last thing that we need to do is we need to wire everything up. So I'm going to go into my the load area here and I have the loader script already associated and I have the alpha from and the alpha twin two, uh, which is basically set to one. And then you can change it to different type of animations if you wanted to. And let me just make sure that everything is wired up. So if I go here, I have these serializables, but there's really nothing that we need to wire it up. So what we can do now is we can go ahead and hit play and see if everything is working the way that it's supposed to. And I didn't see the loading screen. I don't think, I think I didn't see it because it was just too fast. You can see that it's hidden. So that means that, uh, you know, things work and it went through the cycle. And in fact, you can see a starting loader in here and then we instantiated everything and loaded everything and then it's stopping the loader and then instantiated the player controller. So if I were to hit reload, it's going to be really hard to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do a new build. I'm going to go into build settings and then do a build. The, if we do a build, it's actually going to show for a little bit of time because it has to go through the cloud and then pull it back in. And I think it's going to give us enough time to be able to see the loading screen. Okay, so it looks at like the EXE completed. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And let's see if we can see the loading mechanism working. You can see loading is coming up and then it loaded everything and then 
you know, it shows you the character. We can also go here and do a reload, but it's gonna be faster because it's already being cached, right? So if I were to kill this and then reopen the bill, it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna show us the loading mechanism and then it's gonna go away. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions about anything I just mentioned, please let me know in the comments. And also don't forget to subscribe because that's gonna help me in bringing you a lot more content. Thank you guys.